There is a Discord zero-day exploit that is selling for hundreds of dollars that allows anyone to get your IP from your Discord user ID. Now, due to how serious of a problem this is, I investigated every corner of Discord for this exploit, and believe it or not, I actually got to the bottom of it. But this exploit of finding your IP from your Discord user ID isn't available on just one hidden niche website on the internet. In fact, it's available on multiple websites. Now, I want to focus on two specifically. We have this first website, which is called Infosec. And yes, that is a zero, not a no. It's the most hacker man name on the planet. And when I thought the cringe names couldn't get any worse, we have this other website, Cord Killer. God, these people are not original at all. Now let's start our investigation by taking a look at Infosec. Now this website has a handful of modules or features. We have Discord Lookup, which is the main thing we're focusing on, where you can find someone's IP just by getting their Discord ID, which by the way, is as simple as enabling developer options and right clicking on someone's name and copying their user ID. But wait, there's more because you also have data leaks lookup where you can search through data leaks for people's information and you have reverse domain lookup and oh my goodness what is that this is a discord termer which is coming soon now just like my father figure this will not be coming soon this will never show up because there's no way to magically terminate someone off discord now of course how do i figure out everyone's ip on discord well uh oh god there's a subscription isn't there yes you have to pay for this feature of finding people's personal information now i could read this whole entire page but my eyes instantly go to the $700 lifetime subscription to this website. I do want to point out, though, that they call this a security solution. This is not a security solution. This is a tool for Discord e-gangsters. But if you're not one of those slack-jawed morons that try to be an e-gangster on Discord and you're afraid of getting your IP released, conveniently, you can just pay money to get your information removed. All right, I'm jumping out of character for a second, but why would I send these guys money to get rid of my information when they're the ones leaking my information. Oh, uh, I gotta get back in the Discord mindset. This is absolutely insane, and what I need to do is I need to talk to their support. And hopefully this will help them. The payment proof. Wonderful. But remember, this is just one website. And in fact, we're gonna look at the second one, Cord Killer. Now, before we look at their website, let me uh, just dip your toes into the water, get you a little warmed up, by showing you one of their advertisements for Cord Killer. Forgive me, it's in like 720p quality, and man, let me tell you, their website is looking banging. Now, I have a guideline in terms of figuring out whether or not this is a Discord e-gangster skid project. And the first key element is that the music in the background is gonna be trap music or drill music. Well, element one has been satisfied. And the second element of a skid video is complete and utter nonsense. And you can see, um, he's trying to DDoS him off the internet and he's just pinging him through command prompt. That's not how DDoSing works, little man. Trust me, I've tried in like grade four. I tried DDoSing by school's computers. It did absolutely nothing. Anywho, this cord killer website is exactly the same as Infosec. It also has customer support. Hopefully my problem gets resolved. Now, looking at cord killer, it is exactly the same thing where you can find someone IP from their user ID, but I think the best part about this website is that when you search up someone's IP using their exploit, you also have a button where you get to launch an attack, where you DDoS their IP, and considering their advertisement just had you pinging someone in your command prompt, uh, I doubt this works. So we have two websites that both offer the same service, which means they must know the same exploit, right? But somehow me, as the chronically online Discord degenerate, I didn't know about the exploit, and my ego started raising a little bit. I thought that these people were just lying about their service so that I'd show a video about it, make them all popular, and maybe some people would fall for a scam and lose $700. But then the table started to shift a little bit because more and more people started to talk about how their IP on Discord was leaked, which made me reconsider. Is this an actual exploit? Well, if this was a real exploit, then people would have my IP and send it to me. I'd have a snot-nosed kiddo be like, no text-to-speech, I have your IP, I'm going to torture you for the rest of your life. It sounds like a joke, but I genuinely have a lot of people that hate me who are conveniently also Discord scammers and fraudsters because I expose their scams. And yes, they do behave like that. Anyways, I got a DM from this guy here who sent me an IP 192.44.119.109. And then they started saying a whole bunch of names, swag type sh my, and this guy is going to drop information on how they got my IP if I give them a shout out. This guy ends every sentence with the same two words. My IP was being held in the hands of this person with a room temperature IQ. And if I wanted to get to the bottom of this, I would have to shout them out. So, 
Shout out to all your horses there. Let's just figure out where this IP is from. So this is the same IP. I get the IP details. And apparently this is an IP in Ohio. I ain't got no Ohio accent. I don't know what Ohio accent is. I'm in Canada. It's very well known. But also apparently my internet service provider is the Procter and Gamble Company. You know, the people that uh make things like Pampers. I use the adult version. They make bound sheets. They make Tide laundry detergent, bounty paper towels, tampons. I use those as well. Not grooming, no, I don't shave. Hair care, I don't have hair. I don't clean my house. Don't brush my teeth. Oh, and Pepto Bismol. So somehow I was accessing Discord at Procter and Gamble's HQ in Ohio. But maybe this proctologist and gambler IP is actually a VPN of mine. And uh, counterpoint, this is the VPN client I use. I use NordVPN. And uh, you can see I cannot connect to Ohio. It is not an option. In fact, this is what my IP should look like like if they got one of my VPNs. You'll notice it's in Canada because it's closer to me and I like internet speeds. You'll also notice that the ISP is net one GMBH. Remember this? Very important. So anyways, this doofus that wanted a shout out, I uh, told him I made fun of him. But hold your horses, gee golly goo. This was on February 11th. And yesterday I had another clown that popped up who's talking about a new Discord ID to IP and they have this screenshot of, oh my gosh, it's got my Discord token, my username, and my IP, which is the same IP from Ohio. Ohio? Onita. But since this fine gentleman was right in front of my hands, I think it was time for me to interrogate, uh, interview him. So I did. You got my IP. How did you do it? This is fantastic acting by me. It turns out this is his own tool. How did you do it? And it's Discord's database. This was revolutionary stuff. Now I told this guy that my IP changed and he said that we can re-pull your IP because it's directly connected. The reason why he got my IP is because of linked apps on Discord, apparently. His super cool exploit contacts an API. The API pulls your IP when adding you to a server and it fakes a join to a server and then it pulls your IP. Now, was this guy just yapping like a half dead elderly chihuahua that refuses to die? Yes. Anyways, after I started yelling at him and saying that he's a comedy genius, he told me to F off. I lost my lead. I didn't know where to go. But then I got DM'd by someone who had access to InfoSec. And uh, let me tell you, this guy was a lot more helpful than those two other siblings that got sent headfirst down the stairs repeatedly. But this new character was acting a little bit like a Discord gangster. They said they could find my IP. I told them to find my IP and they got nothing. Womp womp. But I wanted to get to the bottom of this. So I told them to try out multiple different accounts which conveniently were all of my alt accounts. And it turns out with one specific account, we got a hit. We got the IP of 176 100 43177. And putting it in the website, if I get the IP details, it is in Vancouver and it is by Net1GMBH. This was an IP that I actually used. And this was the break in the case that will blow this whole mystery wide open open. Now, I have a bunch of Discord alt accounts because I like to talk to myself to feel loved, and the way I keep myself organized with all my alt accounts is that I use Chrome browser profiles, which allows me to have all my alt accounts ready to go at any point in time. But there's a hidden benefit to this, because if I'm logged into an alt account, I can actually just go to my browser history and see what I was doing on a specific day. So, remember that alt account that got its IP exposed? The username was the Bin Laden. Don't ask why. But if I copy the user ID of this profile and we paste it in. This is the same ID as the one in the screenshot. So to get to the bottom of this, I had to look through my history and figure out what I possibly did to leak my IP. Now I went through pages and pages of weird Discord rabbit holes, but in that screenshot there was a timestamp. And on November 19th, 2023, I see the truth of this exploit. On that specific day, I joined a Discord server that required me to verify using a bot called RestoreCord. Now if you didn't know, RestoreCord is a Discord bot that is the backbone for the dark side of Discord. Every single evil Discord server uses a bot like RestoreCord, whether it be extortion communities that extort young girls into harming themselves, all the way up to cyber criminal communities that steal money from innocent people. All of those Discord servers use a backup bot like RestoreCord. Now, why do they use RestoreCord? Well, here's an example of a Discord server that sells Fortnite cheats, which probably has hidden malware in it anyways. But when you join the server, you are forced to verify. And when you click on 
verify, it'll tell you to authorize this Discord bot. There's two things I want to point out. First, this bot is hosted by RestoreCord. And the second thing is that when you authorize this Discord bot, it has permission to join servers for you. And this permission is something Discord has and they refuse to get rid of. And what it allows people to do is that if this Discord server gets terminated, the owner here will make a new Discord server. And since you verified using this bot, this bot will make you join the new Discord server that they just made. So at the end of the day, when this server gets banned, it's as if nothing happened in the first place. And by the way, this is attempt number 15 of me telling Discord to get rid of this permission. But I digress, let's get back to the exploit. But when you verify with this Discord bot, you will notice that I get sent to, drum roll please, what website could it be? Oh, RestoreCord.com. And when you visit RestoreCord, it will log your IP because RestoreCord has a feature of like anti-VPN, so it will check your IP and see if you are on a VPN and it will log that information. And since my alt account's IP was found during the time I used RestoreCord, that must mean that all those people getting their IP leaked is because of RestoreCord, right? Well, I didn't want to base my whole entire investigation off one potential coincidence. So I decided to split my investigation into two paths. So path number one was wait and see. I wanted to wait and see if other people came to the same conclusion I did. So I just dwelled in my basement, avoiding the sun for days on end, and I monitored chats and hopped into all of my favorite Discord servers to spy on. But nothing came up. So I needed to look at another approach. And the second approach that I took, path two, was doing a little bit of background research. I wanted to see who was behind these websites. So I decided to take a look back at the websites InfoSec and CordKiller. Now, I've unfortunately had the dis pleasure of talking to the cord killer owners before, but these guys were so stupid that I really doubt they hacked into restore cord. Remember, they were trying to DDoS someone by pinging their IP through command prompt. So I decided to move my focus towards InfoSec and figure out who the owner was behind it. And if we look at the InfoSec website right now and we scroll down, there is a telegram and a support link. Now, when I click on the support link, we get this person here, Sakasu, who seems to be the owner of InfoSec, but he isn't the original owner. The old owner of InfoSec InfoSec was a guy named Zeb or Zabratic. But just before I was about to do anything, my path one of just waiting and seeing actually worked like a gosh darn charm, boyos. Because it turns out while I was waiting and seeing, these people uh, had a little bit of a group chat and they were doing their own research. So one person had access to InfoSec, but they searched for a Discord ID and they got a result on November 3rd of 2023. So this guy here checks his history and it turns out he also accessed RestoreCord around that date. We have one confirmation. We have another guy. My timestamp is around November 20th, and on November 20th, he accessed RestoreCord. And we have another person who got their IP sent to them, and their timestamp was December 17th. And on December 17th, they went on RestoreCord. So instead of this being an exploit, it definitely feels like a RestoreCord database leak. And since these people were using InfoSec, how did InfoSec manage to break into the RestoreCord database? Well, let's take a look back at Zabratic. But I did some intense research, aka I went on Google. So looking at my detective investigation backend, we can see that Zabraktik has a GitHub profile, which uh, actually really leads to nothing, but they also have a Twitter profile. And this is where the lead started kind of piling on. Because let's see who follows Zabraktik. Oh, Twitter being Twitter again. But if I click on followers and we scroll at the very top, I didn't even need to scroll down. The official RestoreCord account is following Zabraktik. My suspicions were rising a little bit, but that's just a hunch. Well, a hunch didn't even matter because if you go to the RestoreCord Telegram, there is a Zabratic account and uh, he's admin. I don't think we need to rely on a hunch anymore, boyos. Uh, it's pretty clear. This guy has good connections with the owner of RestoreCord. The original owner of the InfoSec website, which is Zabratic, is an admin for the RestoreCord Telegram, which means that the owner of RestoreCord knows this guy. Maybe they had an under the table exchange or maybe Zabratic stole the database without anyone knowing. But just as I answer one question, three others pop up, but then another DM. Remember that dude that sent my alt account's IP? Well, his name is Sage. Now, I've known Sage for a very long time. In fact, for probably two years, because he's been constantly DMing me about a Discord scam that he made, and he's trying to get into one of my videos. Well, congratulations, Sage. You've made it. But not for any good reason, because it turns out Sage is an absolute snitch, because he basically exposed this whole thing and placed it right upon my lap. Because what Sage did is he went on Telegram and contacted Xenos, the owner of RestoreCord, and he sent me the DMs. <laughs> Another mistake. Can I speak to you privately? I'm just wondering if you're allowing Zabraktik to do whatever he's doing, or is he using your database without permission? The 
record database. Now, Xenos, the owner, is just refusing and denying everything. I don't know what he's doing. No one has access to the database. The only access is the actual servers running the site. His Discord IP lookups, the only IDs on there, are people who verified with a restore cord, and the timestamps match too. Send the link. So he sends the link to InfoSec. Next page, please, my good sir. Thank you. Send account with subscription. I can't. It'll get banned. I can screen share. And he sends screenshots of a group DM of people figuring out that this InfoSec website matches exactly with restore cord, like I've shown you before. Just send a screen recording, man. Sage doesn't listen to instructions very well. I don't know what Zabractic is doing, because no one has access. Maybe coincidence. And just make note of that. He's denying everything and saying that it's a coincidence. There is no such thing as a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. We've tested it with 50 people. Timestamps and everything match. Send screenshot. And he sends a screenshot of the InfoSec website. And Xenos, the owner of RestoreCord, sends this screenshot here, which shows the database and how it only has one password. Or in the perfect English, because password only once. So he's denying that Sabractic has access to the RestoreCord database, because there's only one password. It's either he has access and you don't know how, or you're giving him access. This question here wasn't an actual a question because everyone's gonna say that they just got hacked and they didn't know. Denial up the wazoo. And of course, Xenos went directly for that. No one has access to the database except the actual servers. It would be impossible according to Xenos. Again, quite fishy. Now Xenos is going to look into it. But remember, Sage is a snitch. He is Discord's biggest snitch because not only did he snitch on Xenos, but Sage also snitched me out to Xenos? What the what, what is this guy doing? And after he sends the screenshots of of me basically saying that this is RestoreCord and I'll look into it, Sage makes it really clear. This could ruin RestoreCord's reputation, which is already dog water if you watch my videos. And ladies and gentlemen, the denial man, Xenos, changes his tone a little bit, probably because he has a 42 megaton missile, my obese ass, pointed directly at him with a whole potential video on RestoreCord having a database leak, which is this video, by the way. And his tone definitely changes. Oh, goody two-shoes. I'll reset the database credentials. So he resets the credentials, Sage tests out the website, and guess what? All the searches are coming back in as nothing found. The website got broken. Xenos is happy. It's confirmed that he was using the RestoreCord database. And Xenos said, thank you so much. We walk away, everyone's happy. No more IPs being leaked. That'd be if we were stupid and we didn't ask questions, because there's a whole bunch of fishiness around this whole entire thing. First off, I DM Sage and told him that the RestoreCord owner, Xenos, he had a data breach and he needs to disclose it. And if you look at RestoreCord in any channels, there is no disclosure of a breach. So heads up, you're getting it from me, not from the owner. Restore cord got breached. But I'm even more suspicious about Xenos because it turns out our little snitch, Sage, was paid $100 by Xenos. And I think there was a little bit of uh, an under the table handshake because Sage tried convincing me to not make a video about this because of course it could ruin Restore cord reputation. And well, Sage, you failed. So case closed. This Discord zero day exploit is actually just restore cords database which either was sold maliciously or sold without the owner's knowledge personally i think it's more of an inside job but that is just my opinion but that isn't stopping this leaked restore cord database from spreading like wildfire because it was all out cyber warfare across the internet you had skids and people on the bad side of discord leaking each other's ip it was a war zone and i was just in the sidelines i was on the bleachers cheering everyone on like a cheerleader i was excited about all this happening i do want to make it clear though that the RestoreCord database is apparently closed and secure, but these websites are still operating. Whether it be they downloaded the RestoreCord data, or the database is still wide open for anyone to buy if they have the money to. Anyways, gamers, I hope you enjoyed this investigation. Bye-bye, I love you. Mwah.